What's up guys, it's Brian from Cross Coast Gaming with another Java game programming tutorial. So the last time we left off, we made a cool little way for us to modify the game world after the game had already started, and we can paint around whatever we want. But unfortunately, the enemies don't really appear to be taking notice or adapting to their changing environment. So what we're going to do this time is begin our very simple... Uh, I guess AI, if you will, artificial intelligence. And what I mean by that is just getting it to respond and adapt to the environment around it. So we don't want it to be crossing over water and dirt and grass so nonchalantly. Uh, we want to follow a path that we make for it. So I think what we're going to do this time is we're just going to get to first detect when its environment changes and then stop moving there. And then uh, maybe next time we'll get it to follow the path around whatever turns we take it to. But for now, let's just get it to detect what it's around and uh, respond accordingly. So let's go to the enemy class here. And inside of our update, it's very basic. Pretty much we're saying the first time don't do it because of our clock messes up. And then every other time after the first update, just move to the right. So the first thing we're going to do is we probably want the enemy to have a copy of the grid, tile grid, so after this let's just uh, pass it the grid as well and then that means in our instructor for the enemy we need to say it's going to take a tile grid argument and we need to make a variable for it up here and then set that variable and that way we can access not just the tile that it starts on, but the entire map of tiles all around it. So we have the ability to kind of see and learn what's around us. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to make a new method, a boolean, and we're going to say path, path continues. And we need to make a boolean in here. Um, We'll just call it answer and set it to true and then we will return answer at the end. And then instead of our update method, since we're going to be doing more than one line, uh, we need to make brackets around this. And inside of here we're going to say if path continues, then that is when you can move forward. So for our path continues, boolean here, we're going to say uh, Let's see. First, let's get our tile. So current, well, let's call it my tile equals grid dot get tile at our, I think it takes an integer. So int of the x divided by 64, oops, 64. And then our int of our y divided by 64. So the reason we're doing this is because our actual x might be something like 700 or something, right? But the way our get tile works is we're just taking something like each one tile is just marked by one increment instead of 64, even though the actual textures are 64 by 64. So we're taking our x, which is a very precise number on what pixel we're on, and we're dividing that by 64 to say what tile we're on. And then uh, the argument takes integers, so... That'll just lower down any decimal points we have to a, an actual tile. So this is the tile that our, our uh, enemy is currently on right now. So now we want to get the next tile. And we can actually copy and paste what we have here. And since we're only moving to the right right now, we can just say for the x coordinate, we're going to add 1. So one tile over to the right is the next tile. And we're going to say if my tile dot get type equals the type of the next tile, then answer equals true. Um, actually, I don't like that. Let's say if it's not equal, then we'll set it to false. So it starts true, and it just assumes that the path is going to continue. And then it says, well, wait, if our type of tile isn't the same as the next type of tile, then it's actually false. And we'll return the answer. 
if path continues. All right, so let's try it out. Oops. Oh, our wave. We are not passing in the grid after we changed it. So right here we seem to say enemy type. Oh, wait, we need to make a, a getter too. So in the enemy class, let's uh, go down. I guess I'll put it at the very end. Public tile grid get tile grid. I don't know if I should capitalize this or not. Oh, let's capitalize it. And then we'll just return grid. All right, so now we can go to our wave class and say enemy type dot get tile grid. There we go. Just make sure that's all kosher with the errors. And now let's try running it. So it's going along, and then let's put an obstacle right here. And it should stop when it detects the dirt. Perfect. Cool, cool, cool. Let's try it again with water just to make sure. Awesome. All right, so we now have our enemies recognizing that the environment is changing around them and stopping here. And the next thing to code, in case you can't really see how this is going to work out in the future, is pretty much you imagine something like this, right? So they have, actually that was one too far over, something like this, where they recognize a corner here because they're going on one type of tile, and then when they reach another type, they say this isn't right. And so now the next step uh, for next time is just to get them to change directions, notice that the tile above them is of the same type that they're on right now, and then go up. So uh, yeah, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.